In this video, I'm going to talk about the unemployment rate. So we calculate the unemployment rate by looking at the number of unemployed people divided by the number of people who happen to be in the labor force. So let's say we pictured it like a big pie. And we add here is our labor force, this pie. And then within that pie, we've got a smaller subset of people who are unemployed. And so we're just basically calculating the portion of that. Now here's something very important to think about. The labor force does not include everybody. It's not just everybody who happens to, to live in a city or, or something like that. So the labor force does not include, there's no children in the labor force. So eight-year-olds do not count. They're not expected to be working. Nobody who's ill or infirm or sick. So if somebody is on their deathbed in a hospital, uh, they are not considered part of the labor force even though they're not working. And now here's a, here's a, a key thing of the labor force. You must be either, either working or seeking work working or seeking work. And this seeking work is going to be very, very important in interpreting the unemployment rate when you see it in the Wall Street Journal or something. Seeking work. If, so if you're not working, you're actually looking for a job. Now, let's, let's go ahead and, and, and calculate this, and then I'm going to explain why this seeking work can be so important. So, Let's say that in a, a, a city you've got 3,000 unemployed people. I'll change this. 3,000 unemployed people. And then you've got a labor force of 76,000 people. So that comes out to an unemployment rate, and this is rounded, 0.039 which is the same as saying 3.9% unemployment. Now here's where the seeking work come, comes into play and how this can affect uh, the, the unemployment rate. So let's say that there's a recession and the unemployment rate is a certain amount. 3.9 isn't the type of unemployment rate you'd see in a recession, but let's just take that for an example. So you've got 3.9%. So what happens is sometimes people become discouraged after looking for work or seeking work for so long that they give up. And when that happens, when someone gives up, they are no longer seen as part of the labor force. Now here's what might happen though. What if the economy picks back up? Then people who have left the labor force might start seeking work again. So if the economy picks back up and starts adding or creating jobs, the unemployment rate might not change for a while because even though these people who were previously unemployed are now finding jobs, and you have the numerator here decreasing, if this decreases, but you also have the number of people in the labor force increasing because people who had previously given up and left the labor force and stopped seeking work, if they now see that work is available and they say, oh, okay, well, I want to start looking for a job again. I'm going to stop going to school and reenter the workforce. Well, even though now the economy is adding jobs and these previously unemployed people are finding work and this top, this numerator is going, getting smaller, now you've got the number of people in the labor force increasing. So even if we decrease this 3,000 by giving people finding jobs, if this 76,000 goes up due to people, discouraged workers, re-entering the labor force, there could be a lag and we don't see the unemployment rate actually going up even though the economy is adding jobs. So we have to be very careful when we interpret the unemployment rate. And it's just one one thing of many different measures of determining the health of the economy in terms of people's ability to find jobs.